Hi everyone, um, <clears throat> welcome to the channel. See what I did there? I didn't say welcome back. YouTube training getting better, I think. Anyway guys, uh, welcome back. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone that's already subscribed to the Patreon. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how I reach the 31,000 subscribers I've got and get 900 of, to, 900 of them to subscribe. Um, it's just not that easy so if any of you have got any skills on social media and want to give me a hand or point me in the right direction please contact me um, you can go on the YouTube channel or there's my email address or on the Facebook page but to again to everyone that's helped me already um, thank you very much and to those that want to know what it's all about all I'm asking is three pound a month to be part of the project we get 900, 900 of you to sign up and um, we should have enough money in three or four months to build the engine, buy the cart chassis and uh, try and do 175 mile an hour, uh, maybe more according to some calculations that John Wallace has just done. Uh, we might be getting a bit more power. Now, I did post a picture about what this video is going to be about and it's about my batteries and charging my batteries. Um, you'd thought this was an easy subject to deal with but it gets very expensive we've got the two 5S LiPo batteries here they're nearly £500 each so as you can imagine I want to look after them I want to charge them the best I can and the battery charger I had it was taking a day um, to charge each battery so that's two days in total and that's not with the batteries completely empty so I started to look around for a a cost effective um, alternative. Initially, I looked at um, a Sky RC charger, 200 and something pound, more than I'd anticipated paying, but it was initially what I thought would be powerful enough. But then, after doing some maths, speaking to my brother who's big on IC, RC and, and LiPo batteries starts educating me about this 1C and it soon turns out this Sky RC charger at 200 and something pounds still wouldn't be good enough so I then looked at other alternatives and it fast became apparent that a, a mains charger wasn't going to do it I needed to look at the DC and then I was looking at DC power supplies and the DC power supply to do it was probably 230 pound uh, and even then that was sketchy whether it provide what I need and then started to get these um, videos pop up about these server power supplies and as some of the guys have said on the the RC sites and that these you think about what these are asked to do 24-7 365 a year the, 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 the stabilized power um, the, the got all, all clean filters and stuff so they don't see dirt, they're in air conditioned environments and they're just designed to provide power day in day out. So you can pick one of these up for about 30 quid. So that's 12 volts and I think 1000 watts max when you're on 240 volts. Put two of them together you've got 24 volts and 2000 watts and something like 90 amps which is ample for charging these batteries up uh, you can charge them in an hour and um, it all comes for about 60 quid so it's a big saving so what I want to just go through with you guys though is just quickly and there's probably better videos out there to how this is done and what you need to do but I'll give you a brief explanation because to some of you guys it might be helpful it might save you a few quid you might not need to be charging up big power supply big batteries like these but it's still a cheap alternative one of them on their own so the first thing you do is this power supply is a Hewlett Packard and actually it's a DPS 800 GBA no idea what all that means it's just the number I will put a link to a YouTube listing for them um, if you want to get them what you have to do apparently which I've done on this unit 
first thing you need to do is to get the thing to start up. So what you have to do is put a bridge from pin 32 to pin 30, that's pin 32 there, pin 30 there. There is illustrations um, online that you can um, get a better image I suppose. I don't want to start pinching other people's, I've got an image here I'm working off. And then you put a bridge between pin 20, 30, 20, pin 29 and pin 1. What that does is it, it, I'm not sure what it does, but it brings the voltage up slightly, it enables the power supply to hold a continuous power supply. Now, there is ways that some people have, have seen them do, they're getting 15 volts out of these. And that's, that's brilliant, absolutely brilliant, but I only want 24 volts and pushing 15 volts out of something that was designed to give you basically 12 volts plus I think you're, you're asking a bit much and probably going to get failure and that's another point I could have bought a charger with two sides to it and I think he was by two smaller chargers each will do the job but I've got some redundancy if one fails at the track so that's another thing to think about you always need to be thinking well if we go to the track if something fails how does how do I recover from it how do I prevent worst, worst case scenario just take silly things as well just taking cable ties and um, 5 amp block connectors many people don't know this but the world record run in the HX car very nearly didn't happen the problem was solved a broken throttle cable by using a 15 amp um, chocolate block thing and just threading the cable through, screwing down two terminals, fix the problem there at the side of the track. So the other thing you have to do when you, you put the two of these together is you'll see the screws there. What you need to do is take those screws out. The posts underneath you need to file like the grommet, the centering hole, and then you need to replace put a washer underneath, a nylon plastic washer, nylon or whatever, rubber if you've got it, or a grommet would do the same thing, and then replace these M3 screws with um, nylon screws. Now there is another one, there's another post at the back here, and I'm not going to pull it all apart, you're clever people, I'm sure you lot will work it out for yourselves, but there is another one at the back here in which you have to take out and disconnect this earth lead which is connected to the case and the earth spike in the plug. There's another screw down there. You don't need to file the post down but you do need to put a nylon washer underneath it and use a nylon bolt to go through it. Basically what you're trying to do when you parallel these two, I can never remember parallel or survey it seems, I think it's parallel these two together, you don't want the two earth wires connecting so if one does start leaking to earth it doesn't either overvolt this one out or um, makes the bodies live but what I will do is I'll get the whole thing built up um, still some work to do I've got to remove these bolts uh, and then uh, you know, I'll uh, end the video here for the time being and um, we'll be back with you in a bit I might be next day but we'll just do one long video it's been about an hour or so later, probably longer. I managed to, well, burn myself with a soldering iron. I have got some lacquer coming, which I'll coat those with and put some tape around, and stop anything from like people from licking it and small child and children sticking the fingers in. So we're just about to test it. That's the new power supply. I'm amazed how small this. Uh, sorry, that's the new charger. I'm amazed how small this is and how how much it can do. So. There's no point in plugging the batteries in because the batteries are full, so I'm not going to overcharge them. Everything should be good. Look, Colin, safety tie on, mate. Make sure I'm safe, yeah. Hopefully it works with electrocution. Eye, ear protection, yeah. If it goes, big genie, blue genie comes out, we should be good, okay? Fingers crossed, everyone. I'm just going to get my assistants to press the button. Well that was anticlimactic. I expected darkness and my breakers to blow. Oh well. 
It works. Mm. Strange noise come from it does, but hey ho, if there's no blue smoke, all is good. So that's it, we've built a power supply. My explanations weren't that good really, really. So I'm going to put a link to somebody else that did a better review and how to do it in the bottom of the video. But hopefully for some of you guys it will be an idea that you've not seen before, point you in the right direction and um, hopefully a benefit for you. I mean, what, with bits and some cable, 70 quid, buy a real one that's not as powerful. This is like 2000 watts now. 80 amps, probably 90 amps, 24 volt, actually I metered it and it's 25 volts so it's more than adequate to do 6S, it will probably do up to 8S as well um, <clears throat> I suppose you could add another power supply and make it even more powerful but uh, yeah, once again guys, thanks for coming along and having a, a look at the silly things I'm doing hopefully we'll get on to some more interesting stuff soon I plan to do one on how you put the, uh, the fuel manifold together and bend the, the syringes and silver solder it all together and then how you control the fuel. Um, if you've got the time please take a look at the Patreon page and say for the price of a frothy copy, frothy copy, frothy coffee, go get some new teeth from the horse next week hopefully. Um, we'll get this thing built. Um, other than that, again, Thanks for watching. Sorry I've wasted your time. See you next time. Bye.